Hello everyone, we are Team Helium representing the Brainery Coat for this year Robocop 2022 Rescue Junior Rescue Line Under 12 categories. From the right, that will be me, Norman, the team leader. Down the line will be Javier, Houston, and Gavin. These are the content we are going to cover today. Our objective for this competition and how we plan our training, how we come out with this current robot design, strategies on how we can overcome our own setbacks and play few challenges. Lastly, our journey for this competition. Our objective of this competition is to carry out a rescue mission without any human control. Find ways to navigate through difficult terrains and obstacles to find all victims in the evacuation zone. Always find ways to improve on robot design. Lastly, the most important point is to have fun working on this mission. Now I'll pass the baton to Javier to talk about our competition planning. Hello everyone, my name is Javier. I'm here to go through our competition schedule for the competition. For day 1 to 4, we get to know our teammates for the first time understanding the competition missions and rules, targeting different challenges that will be on the play fields. Lastly, slowly build up the base robot prototype. From day 5 to 8, we tried to create sample play fields like line tracing and evacuation zone to do practice runs, and continue fine-tuning the programs with robot modification. As for day 9 and 10, we received the actual competition play field to practice on it. Final checks on our logbooks and presentation slides, and lastly recorded the competition runs for our submission. The robotic set that we will be using for this competition is the EV3 LEGO Mindstorms Educational Set with their EV3 LEGO Mindstorms programming software. Next, I will pass the baton over to Gavin with the robot design. Hello everyone, my name is Gavin, and I'll be explaining how we come out with the robot design and how it works. For the mechanical design of the robot, we use three EV3 large motors, two for movement and one for the evacuation zone cage. Tracks are used for movement because of the larger surface area and mini bumps on the, on the surface. With the large surface area and mini bumps, it creates more friction and can grip onto the speed bumps or ram to climb over them. The 3x7 angular beams help to straighten the robot when it hits the wall. The large motors are placed backwards to mimic a rear wheel drive, which gives the robot extra push to overcome ramps and speed bumps. The rescue kit is helped firmly by the frames and axles on top of the cage before it deploys. When the cage is deployed, the rescue kit will release the frame and the one-way movement axles will drop and hang around the cage. When the robot sweeps around the evacuation zone, the victims will pass through the hanging axles and trap in the cage. As for the electronic design side, the EVG ultrasonic and color sensor are chosen. The ultrasonic sensor is used for object detection. It uses ultrasonic sound waves to measure distance. Therefore, it can detect clear transparent objects easily. Three color sensors are placed in a straight line to mimic an actual array sensor for line tracing. Now, I'll hand over the baton to Houston. Hello everyone, my name is Houston. I will explain how we tackle the line tracing part in the play field. Firstly, we have decided to do a ray tra line tracing as our main line following program. It helps to keep the robot on the center of the line as much as possible. The following diagram explains all the corrective movement when the individual sensor sends the black line or white surface. When the robot sensor sends all black, it will gently move back to find the green squares. 
So the diagram below explains all the different movements when the individual sensors sense the green squares. The above video are examples on how a robot line trees and check green. When the ultrasonic sensor senses an object in front of it, it will stop and drop a line tracing program, activate the object detection program. The robot will maneuver on the object until a selected car sensor sends the black line and continue the line tracing program. I will hand over the baton back to Norman. To overcome heat bound and ram, we make use of the track's large surface area and mini bumps to create more friction and grip for the robot. With the help of rear wheel drive, the robot gets more grip from the back to push the robot forward. I'll hand over the I'll hand over to Xavier to explain how we overcome the challenges in the evacuation zone. We use the combination of color sensors to sense the wall and the ultrasonic sensor to sense the distance of the wall to enter the evacuation zone. Once the robot has entered, it will start searching the corners for the black rescue zone to drop the rescue kit in. Once the robot finds the rescue zone, it will start swooping around the zone to rescue the victims. Once the robot fully sweeps the whole field, it will start searching for the rescue zone again to deposit the victims. When the victims are deposited, the robot will start its search for the green line to exit the evacuation zone. I will now hand back the baton to Norman. The first setback we encounter, the rims we use to stretch the tracks were too big. We use smaller wheel rims to stretch the track evenly so that it is able to climb over speed, bam speed bumps and ramps easily. Second setback is that we placed the color sensor too far in the robot. We moved it out so that it could follow the line smoothly. Third setback we had will be the robot could not climb up the ramp because the robot is back heavy. We modify the robot to shift the center of gravity towards the mid the middle front more. The last setback we encounter is the cage is blocking the the ultrasonic sensor. We adjusted the cage lower so that it will not affect the ultrasonic sensor's point of view. During our experience, our team started creating our own version of a tracker robot, improved the, de improved the designs of the robot to be able to fulfill the requirements of the competition, worked on our programming to get the robot to get past the challenges on the field, and finally, worked out problems in the build and program together as a team. We are happy with how far we have come, but if we have more time, we will definitely make further improvements on our robot. Thank you for your kind attention and hope you enjoy our presentation.